sixteenths on the dirt. The purse of 191,000, approximately 115,000 to the winner. It's hot and humid, but on a fast track here today. Jim, an interesting point that uh, you and I were discussing throughout the last couple of days. You would think after that plate performance that coming along, winning this race would be a sure thing. In the last uh, 31 years, only seven horses have made it this far, actually, and only three of those have gone on to uh, win the Triple Crown. There's been some memorable defeats in the Breeders, uh, where the Proval was able to pull off the Triple Crown last year, as we see as Vestia making his way from the walking ring onto the main track, where he will appear in just about 30 seconds. I think Donnie Seymour uh, was really geared up for uh, today's performance. Uh, he's been through all of this, but uh, nonetheless, he's anxious. Interesting when he talked about, uh, you know, there's pressure on him, for instance. Uh, in the Triple Crown last year, they were going for a million dollars. This is a race that he should win, and uh, boy, if he doesn't win it, well, the pressure will just be overwhelming. What about this track? Uh, and it's the first time out for his Vestia and the others, uh, as far as a race here is concerned. Key Timing is the only horse that's actually stable here. It's a wonderful, wonderful track, the most beautiful infield you'll ever see. As for the uh, main track itself, it's not like Woodbine at all. The uh, circumference is somewhat pinched, which makes the stretch run longer. It's 1,060 feet to the wire from the top of the stretch, where at Woodbine it's 975. And this track is banked considerably, which means you can make a nice run from the outside, and that's where his Vesti is starting on the outside, number five. Just like with approval did a year ago, let's get a good look at these horses. Number one key, timing. As I said, he's stabled here. He was purchased from King Haven. It would be their worst fears if this horse popped up and won it. Twice before, King Haven has sold horses that have come back to win this race for not nearly as much money as this one cost. Paul Suter up for Don Daynard. Number two, roll the dice. Lloyd Duffy has the mount. He had the uh, throat operation uh, that helped his uh, campaign considerably. Uh, some obstruction in his windpipe is now gone. He had his two-race winning streak snapped in the plate when several horses were challenging him. I expect him to be prominent right from the outset. The winningest jockey in all of Canada last year out of Winnipeg, Todd Cable, will be aboard French King. And this horse had considerable problems. If you were watching the Queen's Plate closely, the uh, was rank in the uh, early running. And uh, Jorge Velasquez, the import runner, couldn't slow him down. He has different equipment today because he had his tongue over the bit last time, and that ruined his chances completely. There's also a, a bit of a story on this horse, very formal in Sandy Hawley, Jim. Well, this is a very bossy little uh, gelding, but uh, Sandy Hawley is on his own turf here. His uh, parents live here. His father uh, works in the jockey's room here. The Sandy Hawley and the Sampson Farms won the race that preceded this, and they're looking for a double. And all eyes and most dollars on this horse. It's Donnie Seymour aboard his Vestia. Yes, everyone's here to see him. Uh, he has an interesting pedigree, which makes him so popular with commercial breeders. He's inbred to Nearctic, which means he has it on both his sire's side and his dam side, and that's the preferred nick in breeding circles right now. Well, his Vestia has won roughly a half a million dollars in racing thus far. The next closest would be very formal at around a quarter million, Jim. But it appears at this point it'll be a tough challenge for Very Formal out of the Sampson Farms as he goes up against this King Haven powerhouse. Let's have a look at the two best bets today. Preparing for and running in the Queen's Plate can be a depleting physical experience, and some runners finished a little second-handed, but not as Vestia, who is fresh and ready. I haven't trained him very hard since the plate. Didn't feel that I needed to. Um, he... Uh, you know, he's, he's a very athletic, light horse. Um, I've just put an easy half a mile into him. He's had um, extensive long gallops, a lot of trotting. And, um, and you know, reasonably sharp 5.8 this morning, which is well within himself. And, uh, you know, he's, he's just in excellent condition. I'm afraid of nobody. I respect everybody. And, um, in, you know, in any horse race. And um, it's another race. And it's, it's another day, but uh, I mean, if he runs to the, all his other races and, uh, and and to the way he worked here this morning, then he's, you know, he'd, he'd be very, very, very hard to beat. But you know, it's another day's racing, and you know, things happen sometimes. You know. He he's a horse that um, he he can run on the front end all the way if he wants to. He can sit off, you know, um, if there's good pace in the race, he can sit off the pace. Um, but he's, he's so versatile that I don't know how you go about beating him, to be honest with you. I mean, it, you know, if they, if they want to try to go out and back the, uh, back the pace off, then he'll just go wide away. And um, if somebody wants to go out and make their own pace, then I'll just sit off. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't know how to beat him. Well, one of the...
strategy that I thought would make a lot of sense was if they put uh, Zvesti in the gate backwards. And that way it would give us all a chance to get it, kind of get off and get on our way and have a de decent decent start and then uh, he could do what he could do from there, but I mean, that would probably make it a little more fair horse race. Very Formal had trained well going into the plate and after a brief respite he has again taken vigorously to training. He still has plenty of fight left in him for today. Well, the Queen's plate was a little bit, you know, hard on Very Formal. He showed some wear and tear. He ran a hard race in the race even though he finished a well-beaten second. You know, it was a tough race on him and his legs needed a week or ten days to uh, recover from the race before they were ready for him to start back in preparation for the Prince of Wales. But he seems to be doing quite well right now and uh, he's had two, two good breezes coming up to the Prince of Wales and I think he's in good shape. John Seymour, we've been in this position many times just before a horse race and you seem very calm. Well, thank you, Terry. I am. I'm glad to be here. I'm, I got the horse that uh, is the favorite in the race, and I'm, I'm sure that he's capable of doing the same thing and the same repeat as he did in the plate. How do you see it going? Do you see breaking out in front and holding it all the way, or are you going to tuck in behind and wait? Well, I was actually, I, I'm in the advantage seat right now. I got, I'm in the outside hole. I can watch what's going on before I hit the first turn, the clubhouse turn. Uh, I'll take it from there. I, I don't really want to say any secrets right now. It's just a matter of uh, when I have to make my move or if I'm going to be in front or if I'm going to come off the pace. Any distraction as far as the rumors surrounding his Vestia's potential sale as far as you're concerned? Well, not really. I, I don't, really don't know nothing about the sale right now. I'm, I'm, hopefully I'll find out after this race today what the, the clause is and where, where he's going or what he's, his plans are in the future. I have every confidence that you'll retain the ride and King Haven will continue with the racing career of Vestia. As for today's race, good luck, Don. Thank you very much, Terry. Ron? All right, Terry. A possible sale, a possible purse. Fort Erie must look like Fort Knox to King Haven right now. We'll be back with more of the Prince of Wales stakes in a moment. <laughs> Vestia all the way today. Maybe the word is uh, invest in you. Uh, <laughs> one to nine right now. That's a prohibitive uh, favorite. The uh, minimum payoff for that is two dollars and ten cents. For, for every deuce you put up, you can get yourself a dime. You can't get rich, but there have been known people coming and betting a couple hundred thousand dollars on races such as this just to grab that five percent. Everything here points to a romp for his Vestia, but I do wonder, Jim, about this horse, very formal and Sandy Holly up. Very formal, did not run well in the plate trial, but ran extremely well in the Queen's Plate itself. Sandy loves this area. His folks are down around here. He has the chance to often frequent them and this racetrack. And I think that uh, there is a chance he's confident about Very Formal's possibilities of a big upset here this afternoon. At any rate, he's standing by right now with Terry Lyle. Sandy Hawley, you had a chance to stay at Woodbine in Toronto and have a pretty serious day there, but you've come here, so you're obviously serious in your attempt at the Prince of Wales. Well, I think we had uh, six or seven mounts at Woodbine and a uh, really nice filly for Mr. Samuel in the feature race, but uh, we opted to come here to Fort Erie and ride very formal, who I, I think has got a very fair chance today. Of course, as Vestia, you know, he's definitely going to be a horse to beat and uh, he's going to be very tough, but uh, I don't think we're going to have as much traffic as we had in the Queen's Plate and uh, maybe we'll be laying up a little bit closer. And there's two or three speed horses in there that I think will keep his Vestia honest the first part, have an honest pace, and uh, we'll just try and run them down at the end. Could be a very exciting stretch run then, in your opinion. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, he, he ran a very uh, strong race for me in the Queen's Plate. I had a little bit of traffic problems with him. I got to the head of the stretch and got him run, and I looked and thought, holy mackerel, the other center of guns at the wire already. But uh, I think we'll be a little bit closer to him today. Looking forward to it. Good luck, Sandy. Thank you. Ron, Jim. Sandy Holly, of course, speaking with Terry uh, moments ago, and uh, there he is, anxiously awaiting his opportunity. Ten wins to the uh, credit of this great horse. And uh, you, you can't help but think that, boy, if it's ever going to be an upset, Sandy Holly's going to be the one uh, to do it. He's won this race four times. Uh, we notice now as we're looking uh, at top of the grandstand. Uh, that's Roger. Is that Roger and Bud? That's Roger and the and uh, Roger yeah, exactly. And they're they're there because of superstition. They were there last year when with approval, one, and they're there again this year looking to root his Vesti on. I guess it's uh, Dave Wilmot, Bud Wilmot, uh, maybe getting closer to the track uh, for the best viewpoint. And as you say, superstition would mean that Atfield and David would have to be up there to get a good look at their horse, number five, is Vestia, who has drawn the five hole like with approval did a year ago. And he won a narrow victory over Damascadan and Most Valiant. And who'll forget that race a year ago? 
We're looking at key timing right now, and as I mentioned earlier, he's based here at the Fort Erie track. He was purchased from King Haven, and a couple stories surround the King Haven selling of horses. Uh, an $1,800 purchase uh, in 1979, Mass Rally came and beat their, con their uh, Queen's Plate winner, and another one in 1981, Cadet Corps, for only $8,000 ended up winning this race. At least they've smartened up considerably, and they've hiked the price, $80,000 for this one, and he's on his way west after this. Here's French King, a horse that hasn't really fared well uh, in this series or the lead up to it. Sometimes he's great. He beat his Vestia last year in the Coronation Futurity when the track was sloppy, when his Vestia suffered his worst defeat. As we mentioned, it was equipment problems that had a very negative impact on his record in the uh, Queen's Plate. Okay, we're set. Let's go upstairs and join Dan Loiselle for the call of the Prince of Wales. Well, they're being loaded into the gate for the second jewel of the Bank of Montreal Triple Crown, the Prince of Wales Stakes. And the heavy, heavy favorite one to nine is his Vestia and just a five way so off of that impressive, impressive victory in the Queen's Plate. French King just walking into line, an equipment change on him today. Very formal walks into the gate. He's the nine to one second choice. And we wait on the Queen's Plate champion is Vestia. Is Vestia will be the last horse to load. And Don Seymour has the call on this son of ice capade. Just walking into line. They are at the post. They're off in the Prince of Wales Stakes. Roll the dice in the center along with French King is Vestia. Broke well from the outside. Just to his inside, very formal and coming away in fifth was key timing as they move in front of us for the first time. Now as Vestia has assumed the early lead, roll the dice. Toward the inside is second, very formal, out of trouble on the outside, third. French King, just two very formals inside, and key timing is about six lengths off the early lead. They're midway of the clubhouse turn. It's roll the dice and is Vestia. There, stride for stride to the back stretch. Now as Vestia takes the lead by head. Roll the dice is second, very formal, stocks them from third, just two and a half lengths off the lead. French King to the inside, fourth, and key timing. The quarter was in 23 and a fifth and half a mile in 48 and 1. Roll the dice is asked for a little more run by Lloyd Duffy. He joins his Vestia once again. Those two continue to slug it out down the back stretch. Roll the dice on the inside is Vestia on the outside. Very formal is third. French King within three lengths of the lead. And key timings making a move around three rolls as they run to the far turn. He's out there three wide and in a challenging position. They're running through the far turn now. Three quarters was in 12 and 4, and his Vestia is a clear leader now. He's their length. Roll the dice, can't stay with him. Very foremost, two lengths off is Vestia. They come to the quarter pole. It's his Vestia. His ears are pricked. He's wanting more. He's in front by three. It's his Vestia by three. Very formal in hot pursuit. Holly goes to the whip. French King is third, and roll the dice is fourth, but his Vestia opens to six at the eighth pole. Very formal second, and French King is third. His Vestia toying with his field in the Prince of Wales stakes. Another dazzling display. And very formal was second, French King third, key timing was fourth, and roll the dice was fifth. Uh, down the back stretch there, Ron and Jim is Vestia, and roll the dice went head and head, but I think Seymour was just toying with roll the dice on his inside. He went a little wide off the turn, but he certainly was the best this afternoon. The running time, 1.56 and 2, two-fifths of a second off the track record. Thank you very much, Dan. Another blistering performance by Izvestia, who eased his way into a second jewel victory here today. The pattern was the same, Jim. A nice blowout on Thursday, five furlongs fast, and then the big victory on a Sunday. As Danny said, a little uh, awkward coming off the bend there, but he'd never run a race on this track before, so that's somewhat understandable. As uh, with the Queen's Plate, uh, the, the fractions in this race seem to get progressively better. Uh, after a second a quarter in 25 seconds, he picked it up to go 24 and 3, and then another 24 and 3, and finished in an excellent 1 minute 56.2. We've been making comparisons between himself and with approval. He beat with approval's time in the trial and the plate, and he beat with approval's time today, winning the Prince of Wales in 156 and 2. That is a stakes record. It is not a track record. That is held by Big Blunder, and it is uh, dates back to uh, the 70s. Uh, we see the uh, Samson runner there uh, in a desperate pursuit. Okay, let's go now to Terry Leibel. Thank you very much.